this uh, lemma. So is it okay or you want me to have a justification of this equality? Student have to comment. Is it fine or I should give a quick justification? Yes, sir, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, then I'll go ahead. <clears throat> okay, so I'll discuss something which is not from this book of Artin, but this may be useful to justify something which is written in the book. And namely, for equality, that determinant of A times B equal to determinant of A times determinant of B. Okay, so this equality is known, I mean, is verified for when coefficients are coming from complex numbers. So we want to say this is always true when you have coefficients are coming from a commutative ring. So in this direction, this result is helpful and uh, it's by on its right, this is an interesting result. So I, this subsection I'm calling as polynomials versus polynomial functions. Okay. So let's start with an example. Let fx equal to one plus x and gx equal to one plus x squared. And they are belonging to z to x. Okay. So I want to evaluate these two and get to define a function. So consider a function and evaluate this so f0 is 1 and f1 is uh, 0 and g0 is 1 and g1 is 0, right? So uh, what I can say that f and g define the same function on z2 cross z2. Am I right? <clears throat> But f, fx and gx are different polynomials. Okay, so now in this direction, we want to, uh, okay, before I say this one, maybe I just recall a definition. Recall. <clears throat> So uh, a naught plus a one x like this, a n x to the power n, and b naught plus b one x like this, b m x to the power m, coming from any ring coefficients from any say commutative ring with unity. Right now I am since looking at only them. <coughs> So um, uh, I am assuming R to be commutative thing with unity and only one variable. So they, they are equal. Uh, when they are equal, by definition, if and only if, anybody would like to suggest from students? Pi is equal to Pi. M equal to N. Uh, AI should be equal to BI. For all all I. That's right. So this is by definition of the ring Rx. Two elements are identical with this. Is. Otherwise, they are different polynomials. Okay. So the theorem or the proposition. <clears throat> Suppose uh, F is an infinite uh, field. Uh, maybe I take complex. Okay, I do not want to do F. Later you can do it for F. So I'll just restrict myself to C. Suppose uh, F X1, X2, Xn. Now uh, you can generalize the previous what equality of two polynomials for more polynomials with more than one unknowns or variables. And suppose I have a polynomial in C, X1, X2, Xn, all right? Now the statement is, uh, this 
defines a zero map or function on CN if and only if it is the zero polynomial. And C may be replaced by any infinite field. Okay. So the example which we saw here, the example is of finite field Z2. And here I am taking in, uh, C and I'm saying, making my statement is that even if I, if you replace C by F, where F is an infinite field, then this is true. So for example, if you know that uh, uh, algebraic closure, if you take algebraic closure of Z2, which is infinite, the statement is true for over that also. All right. So proof, maybe quickly I'll give, try to give a proof. Uh, by induction, uh, we are going to use <coughs> proof is by induction. Uh, so uh, f of x, I have one symbol now, one variable. So f of x <coughs> equal to zero for x coming from to c, from c. Can I say that f, uh, maybe I replace this x by another symbol because x is my variable. So I'll say a, where a belongs to c for all. Can you tell me, can I say that fx is zero identically? Anybody? Please comment. Yes, sir. Yeah, what is the reason? Yes, sir, because for all A belongs to C, we, have, we are having this thing. Yeah, so why it, it, F should be identically zero? Okay. Uh, we know. Yeah. Yes, sir. yes. Sir. You understand the point? Yes, sir. Yes. No more than degree of f. It is infinitely right. right. Root degree of f is finite. Okay. And yes, yes. Finitely yes, many sir. points, so it can have at most degree many so zero roots. So number of root is now infinite. So therefore, C can this argument will work for any infinite field. Is it okay? Yes, sir. So it is okay. So it is identically zero. So zero as a polynomial. That is as a polynomial. All right. So suppose n is bigger than one. That means number of variables I'm using is at least two. All right. Then what I can do, I can write f x1, x2, xn as g0 plus g1 x n like this g m x n to the power m where g naught maybe i write g i is actually g i of x1 x2 x n minus 1 please see carefully what i have done yes is it right if I have a polynomial in X and Y, I can write it as a polynomial in X with coefficients coming from Y. With coefficients are polynomials in Y. Is it fine? So yes. Yes. I'm doing the same thing now to apply induction. This is the trick. All right. So now for any point P belonging to C n minus one, C can be replaced by F actually, where F is an infinite field. Uh, what I can do, f uh, p x n is g not p g one p x n g m p x n. But what do I know that this vanishes for any choice of x n, right? It is vanishing at every point of c n. So therefore, when I I am fixing my first n minus one components, last one is free, right? So which 
which vanishes for all x n equal to a belonging to C. Right? So what can I so say? This implies for every P belonging to C n minus one, uh, P is a parameter now. This polynomial is zero polynomial. That is G i p is equal to zero for each i zero to m. Okay, and p is c is p is here uh, dummy. I mean, it is uh, we have chosen. P, I mean, what is called arbitrary fix arbitrarily fixed where p is arbitrary. Right. So that is what. So that means G i p is zero for all p belonging to C n minus one. Now what am I going to do? Tell me. Induction step. Induction hypothesis. Use yes. induction hypothesis by induction hypothesis. G G i x one x two x n minus one is identically zero. That is zero polynomial. So original f, x, f, x, n, x, to x, n is the zero polynomial. Okay. All right. So this is the proof of the statement. Okay, and this is interesting that for infinite field, this is this works. And you have seen that I have not used any other property than that C is infinite. Okay, now uh, determinant of a matrix is how did we we know that this is something like signature, some sign is going to come, then a a one sigma one like this a. Mm, n sigma n am i right something like this is true so yes sir so how many variables are there there are n square variables namely ai sigma right, right. ai sigma i uh, i mean i should write ai j sigma j ai j ai j these are entries. Yes, sir. Yeah, and I and J, they are varying from one to n. Now, what are the coefficients? Coefficient one or minus one? Yes, sir. Right, right. So this polynomial. Uh, okay. So now, what am I going to say? Determinant of A B. Minus determinant of a, determinant of b. Here, how many variables will be, will be there? Polynomial in how many variables? N square. N square. Right. I thought two two n square. I thought. Two. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Two n square. Multiple. That's that's right. And now n square of them are coming from A, n square of them are coming from B. And how, what about the coefficients? Can I say they are, can I say that they are uh, some combination of this ones minus one, one? And zero. Yeah. So okay. So, okay, so this polynomial is zero polynomial. This defines a zero map on this. So a zero map. Zero, sorry, zero polynomial. So we know that this defines a zero map on this. Is it fine? Yes, sir. Yeah. So we know that this is zero map here. So therefore, this is zero polynomial. 
so therefore it will it will it will vanish in any over any ring so long the co they are commuting okay so you can see in the book so some 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 you know uh, statements comments are written there about this equality over arbitrary ring but i thought i'll supply a, a sound uh, uh, argument to support his comments okay so i'll switch to now eh? the other i'll continue with the other topic all right so next what i i want to discuss diagonalizing integer matrices suppose a is an m by n matrix consider uh, the equation the system of equations ax equal to b where naturally i need uh, b to be a column matrix so m by 1 coefficients coming from z so when coefficients are coming from a field we know that we apply elementary row operations uh, on the augmented matrix and when uh, uh, the coefficient matrix is in rr form then we decide easily where the rank of a is matching with rank of ab you remember this rank of a with rank of augmented matrix a with b if they match then we say that system is consistent and in when a is in rr form writing down solution is very easy that is the theory of our finite field sorry over any field doesn't matter finite or infinite so now uh, we want, we are talking about uh, the ring z coefficients are coming from z then elementary row operations are not enough okay so over a field what we did we uh, get an equivalent just to remember equivalent system a prime x equal to b x does not change b prime such that this augmentation matrix a b is rho equivalent to a prime b prime this is what we did in, in college and then and a prime is an rr matrix matrix but when coefficients are coming from a ring for example from z then this may not work this may not work why it may not work when we have a field every non zero element is a unit so that is an advantage. So here, uh, for example, when we have Z, you have only two units, one and minus one. So let us take an example uh, that uh, A, suppose coefficient mat matrix is like this, two to zero four. If you like, you can supply a zero row further, but let me just write like this. Uh, so, uh, can we convert into an RRE matrix? We cannot because we cannot divide by two. If you want to have to divide by two, if you if you can divide by two, you get one. Therefore, I can talk of RRE matrix. You remember RRE matrix require one unity, what is called pivot element, right? Those have got one. So here we do not have. So what we have to do? We now allow. Uh, column operations okay so here what i have written row equivalence this the process is by row operations elementary row operations so now here we allow 
a row and maybe I say both. Both row and column operations. Both. <coughs> then what will that then what we can do? Let us see. Two two zero four. I'll apply some column operation. You maybe you can suggest me what is a good column operation. Maybe I apply second column replaced by second column minus the first column okay then then i have i get this one which is diagonal okay so ap applying column operation is helpful just to indicate we are we have considered this very simple equation uh, simple example so what we are going to allow what are all operations we are going to apply allow we allow the following operations. One, interchange of any two rows and any two columns. Multiply any row or any column by a, by what? Where am I? Entries are coming from Z. Yeah. Will, you, will you multiply, allow to multiply it by any integer? Please comment. Yeah. Yeah. So if, I, if you allow to multiply by two, Will I, will I get back, you know, is it a reversible process multiplying by two? What is a reverse operation? No, no, nothing. No, no, because reverse operation is multiplication by half, which I don't have. Yes. So therefore we are not going to allow multiplication by, multiplication by two. So what is the correct word I should write? Multi column multiplication by what? Unit. Units, namely? One plus is minus anywhere minus. there, so I say simply minus one. one. and minus one. Yeah, one I don't have to write. Yes, right? yes. So I'll write simply minus one. That is the only reason why I'm writing minus one. Am I still connected? Your screen is no, visible. sir. Your screen is no, oh, sorry, screen okay. is not visible. I got it. Now is it? Yes. All right, thank you. Third, <clears throat> adding a multiple of a row or a column to another row respectively another column, not the same column. Huh? So these are the operations we are going to allow. Okay, and objective is not to get any RRE matrix because for RRE we need unity. So we may not get one. So objective is to get diagonal matrix. But again, you may say that your matrix, original matrix is not a square matrix. How will you get a diagonal matrix? In not a diagonal matrix in that sense. So it is diagonal. You, you will try to find see the principal diagonal, but it may not hit the corner below. Okay. <clears throat> so thus, when I apply operations, so then I am just writing this tilde because I it is a reversible process. I can come back and uh, uh, on A, I'll apply some certain operations, say Q1. If I apply some row operation, I know uh, it is pre-multiplying A by uh, an elementary matrix, elementary. And then like this, I, I'm, I can apply some finitely many like this, and then Q1, Q2, 
P2 PR. So that means here I have multiplied A by a sequence of elementary matrices from either side. Okay. And this can be thought as Q times A times P, where we know each elementary matrix is an invertible matrix, P and Q are in belonging to, oh, I'm sorry, the sizes may be different. So I should write care, be care, care to be careful. Uh, so what P should be? It should be coming from GL, N, Z, and Q should come from GL, M, Z. Am I clear here? Yes. Yeah. So applying those operations are equivalent to do this. We will see some example, of course. <coughs> okay. So uh, if it, I, I'll be happy if you allow me to write here Q inverse uh, because it, of a reason, because it is invertible, I can write Q inverse. So Q inverse is this product, okay? I mean, Q, this Q inverse is related to what we have in our statement, which I started with today or ended our uh, discussion uh, in the previous class, right? You remember this? Uh, a prime equal to Q inverse, which is related to change of basis of the co-domain space, a co-domain module, a free module times A times some P, which is related to change of basis of domain module. Do you remember this? Yeah. Today ask, I asked whether I need to verify. Mm -hmm. So this is the same, same thing. So I'm just, I, so, I want to connect the two things. So applying row operations and column operations are uh, related to this change of basis in the uh, domain module and co-domain module. They are free modules, right? ZM is a free module. <clears throat> All right. So this example now I should do. So I have a matrix A, which is one, two, Three. This example is also in the book. I deliberately chose this example so that you know if you read the book, you can verify. So because I, I am only thing that I am including what operations I am applying. This is the operation. The second row I am changing, and this is the change minus four times first row. So then what I get is one, two, three. 0, minus 2, minus 6. All right. So then I apply column operation. I want to convert it uh, 1. I want to convert into 0. This one also 0 and 0. Then I don't know. I have to calculate. So how will I get? So I apply change C2 by C2 minus 2C1 and C3 replaced by C3 minus 3C1. So then I will get zero here. Then what will happen to the other two? But there is no problem because here it is just zero, right? Then further I apply second row, I just multiply by minus one. One zero 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 two six, and then again I apply column operation. I just want to convert this guy into zero. One zero zero two zero zero. What is the column operation? C three. I just replace by C three minus two times three times C two. Okay. So th these are the operations now. I have to write down what is P and what is Q inverse. So now let us write down Q inverse. So let us look at <coughs> what are the row operations. Okay, what is the first row, last row operation that I'm going to write in the left. Last row operation is this guy, this one, right? This one is the last row operation in this activity. Yes. Sir. What is it corresponding to? Which matrix I'm, I'm supposed to write? Second row is changed. So I'm, I, I'm supposed to write. Is it okay? This is this matrix when I apply multiply, 
to the previous matrix, I get an X matrix. What is, an, what is the next, next actually the previous to this row operation? This is the next, not next, but previous. So, so this is corresponding to which matrix? Can anybody tell me? First row is nothing done. So I write like this. Second one is minus four here, one here. If I multiply, pre-multiply A by this, I'll get the second matrix. One, two, three, zero, minus two, minus four, six. Is it fine? Yes. Okay. So then this is, you just multiply and see that this is one, zero, four, minus one. So I have got Q inverse. This is called Q inverse. So therefore you can find Q by taking the simply inverse. Okay. Uh, in this case, uh, Q inverse is what? Anyway, so you can compute. Uh, sorry, P. Next I have to say P. So P, what am I going to write first? Three cos three. Three cos three, correct. And which one? One zero zero. One zero zero. Zero one zero. Zero one. Zero. Yes. Then in third row it will change. I thought you were going to tell me minus three because here is a minus three. No, no, not that minus. This minus this three. The last option here is. So you have to take, you have to write product of three, right? How many column operations are there? Two. Three, no? One, two, three. Sorry. I apply two simultaneously. They commute. They commute. That I agree. Yeah. So this is two, three position. So I'm going to write minus three here. And one. Then one to position, zero, three, zero, one, zero, 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 one. Fine. One, zero, minus three. Minus three, okay, minus three. And one of them should be two also, no? This is two. It should be minus two. Yes, it's minus two. No, I, I think I have written wrongly. This, yeah, this is fine. Yeah. So you verify that this is, you are going to get uh, one minus two, three, zero, one, minus three, zero, zero, one. So P looks like this and Q inverse is this. All right. Inverse also, we haven't changed the multiples sign and for column also, we haven't changed the multiples. Like if we are doing operation from on the column operation, C3 goes to C3 minus three C1. We are writing minus three as a yes. profit. Also for row operation inverse, when we're writing Q inverse, we're writing the same multiple. Whatever yes. row operation. Yeah. Okay. okay. This is correct, right? Just that in P yeah, matrix, yeah. is there a minus three on, in the first row? You are talking about the factors of P, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you are saying it should be plus three. Minus three in the first row in the in the P matrix. Yes. Yeah, this is minus three. We are we have not multiplied any row by a when we multiply, okay, so how, how did we discuss uh, how matrices are related to the operations? Normally linear algebra we learn. So, I mean, I, it's not clear what is the confusion you have. And I'm just asking, is this the first row in the P matrix? First row is one minus Oh, three. oh this one? Yeah. I this think is minus it's, three. Yes, yes, yes. And when you multiply, are you going to get three here in this position in the first row? 
maybe we have not multiplied by 3 na no i mean you have written the final answer as 1 oh i see. I, see. i see i see that i don't know i multi when i did it i got this one okay 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 okay, okay. yeah that is what i was just asking okay, maybe so this is can us... right yeah 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 maybe this sign should be uh, i think we can plus... take it. that's that's not too important i think yeah we can verify the multiplication later okay so this may be actually plus 3 i i thought this is plus 3 so please verify once okay so the, um, okay please verify i'll just <clears throat> Okay, the theorem. So based on this kind of uh, activity only, let A be an M by N matrix with coefficients coming from Z. Then there is a product of elementary matrices. of appropriate size uh, size size we know actually m by m and n by n that is the appropriate size p and q such that a prime which is q inverse p a is a diagonal matrix where a looks like this diagonal means diagonally I'm coming like here up to say dk. After that, I may have here certain zero rows, zero columns. And this is again m by n. The size of the matrix is not changed. Okay. So we don't mean that if I hit, uh, you know, for go further diagonally, I'll, I'm going to hit the corner zero. That is not may not be true. But here, interesting thing is that this D1 divides, maybe where I let me, okay, this is there. D1 divides D2 and D2 divides D3, like this, uh, divides DK. This is what, it's not just diagonal, and we can make sure of this property. Okay, so I'll not prove every step of this, just I will try to give a hint of this. Uh, so what is happening when I have a matrix? I have a matrix here, it is a map from Zn to Zn. So it is a A is an M by N matrix. So what we do, some matrices we apply, multiply, invertible matrices. So here, then what is A prime? P, oh, uh, order is wrong. P, P first, compose with A, compose with Q inverse. You see that? So this going back, this is Q inverse. If I go like this, I'm supposed to get A inverse, A prime. Is it clear? This as a map, what is happening? From Zn to Zm, A prime is a map. That means the matrix, which is same thing as composing P with A, then Q inverse. Okay. So this is just another way of seeing the same thing. And some comments here, how to prove this. Proof is uh, of this is by induction on the size. And the key, key point is bringing the smallest non zero. Entry 
इन एब्सोल्यूट वैल्यू में भी टू पोजिशन वन वन सो विल ट्राई टू ब्रिंग द स्मॉलेस्ट वन एंड ओके बाय अप्लाइंग अप्लाइंग सुटेबल रो एंड कलम ऑपरेशन सच डेट एन इंटरेस्टिंग शुड थिंग शुड हैपन द मैट्रिक्स takes the form d1 where d1 divides every coefficient every other coefficient or entries okay so that means m is having maybe m minus 1 times n minus 1 entries and each of them should be divisible by d1 zeros are anyway divisible by d1 and if it does not divide then we, the idea is to apply division algorithm okay apply division algorithm to uh make sure of this property okay so this can always be done so again if some entry is here then maybe you have to shuffle and uh, remainder is smaller than than d1 if some element is not some coefficient is not divisible by d1 then what you can do apply division algorithm and get the remainder either it is zero or remainder you get a remainder so non zero positive quantity then it is and you will you will again apply elementary row operation and bring, bring it to position 1 1 and if you repeat this process ultimately this property is satisfied okay so suppose we can so that means this theorem i am not doing all the steps and explaining the proof but practically we should know that this is possible and how to do this okay so we should do more examples of for to practice how to ap apply row operations column operations which are allowed which are invertible and then get this matrix in the form which is diagonal such that the first one divides the sex the second one any one divides the next one okay okay so now suppose we have a, again let us go back to the equation that on solving this ax equal to b this is our issue and recall that a is an m by n matrix with integer coefficients b is m by 1 with integer coefficients uh suppose p belongs to gl nz and q gl mz such that a prime is q inverse ap is of the is equal to this that means i have applied the theorem i mean L theorem says that there exists an algorithm which does this can i apply that algorithm okay so then what is the advantage of this now we are going to apply this form okay so number 1 that solution of a prime x prime equal to 0 so i am putting x prime because uh, some equation okay unknown number of unknowns are same number of number is same that but variables have changed you know that when i am applying column operations maybe i have shuffled them i have maybe multiplied by some minus 
Okay, maybe I have com taken combination of old and unknowns. So, so sol solution of this is now easy to write down. Can anybody suggest me what are the solutions of this where matrix A prime is this? D1, D2, DK diagonally. Anybody? Only this one x2 are zero. Right, because d1 x1 is zero, d2 x2 is zero, dk x k is zero. So therefore, x1, x2, up to xk, I must have zero. And xk plus one up to xn, this can be any integers. Am I right? So any solution yes. is it's a general solution I can write like this. Okay, that is one thing we got. Then can you tell me solution of AX equal to zero? So there is some change of basis, right? Are given by what is how, how X and X prime related? Is it not? P times X prime. Okay, if you have a confusion, let us do it. Zero equal to A prime X prime, right? So which is what? A prime U. is equal to Q inverse A P. Right, so I'm, I, I'll have like this. X, yes. So therefore this is, uh, this will give me A P X prime is zero. You see, a Q prime I can throw away because it is invertible and left hand side is zero. I multiply both sides by Q and get this. So, so uh, this is a solution. P X prime is a solution. Then you will ask me that how do I know that every solution is like this? Hmm? So if A X equal to zero, then again, the same thing I can do and show that then x prime equal to p inverse of x is a p solution. Of x, yeah. A prime, x prime equal to zero. Okay. Am I right? Because I can come from one system to another system. Is it fine? Yes, so, sir. Yeah. So therefore, solutions are given by this. I'll just simply have to say where, maybe they did where x prime is as above. x prime is as in one. x prime is already, this. solutions are defined here or solutions of a, a prime x prime equal to zero. All right, so this is one advantage. Solving homogeneous system of equations, we know. Three, the image denoted by W prime under the map A prime. That means multiplication by A prime. That is W prime is A prime times Zn. I'm applying A prime to any element of Zn. And what are possibilities? What are all possibilities? So can you tell me by seeing this one? If I multiply by A prime to a Zn, what are all I'm going to get? Anybody would like to suggest? Simply multiply. I'll get D1 of the first component. So vector E1. So I'll say that uh, consists of, of linear combination. Maybe I write in full linear combination of uh, D1 E1 D1E1 plus D2E2 plus dot Right. And coefficients are coming from that. Linear combination of integer linear combination. Okay. Maybe that integer, integer. Coefficients are coming from that. That means integer linear coefficients uh, combination. Is it fine? So now we know yes, yes. image under A prime. So next question will be, the image W under A. 
that is i want to know what is w of a z n okay so is it, it again it is similar you, you you can suggest me what is a is q anybody q a dash p inverse a dash p inverse okay of any element here so this is this is arbitrary so p inverse z n is same thing as z n do you agree because, yes, because, because is invertible. Is invertible. Yes. So what is the answer therefore? Uh, what did we get here? Yeah. Here we have got Q P. D1 E1, Q D2 E2. Yes. Dot Q D K E K generated by right. this. This to be multiplied to linear combination like this. That's right. So I'll say that Q of Y prime, where Y prime is uh, else above. This is Y prime belonging to W prime, right? Y prime is any linear combination of these. Then I'll just pre multiply that linear combination by Q. Is it okay? I don't have to prove anything now because we have, once we understand this one, it's now clear here. Can you explain point four again, please? Yes, yes. So, what I'm looking at now in three, I was trying to find A prime Z, ZN. In four, I'm finding A ZN. Yes, yes. Then what we did? A is replaced by in the, we are writing A in terms of A prime, mm -hmm. right? We know yes. the relation, right? A prime is Q inverse A P. A P. Yes. Therefore, Q A prime P inverse equal to A. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's what I have substituted. But P inverse Z n is Z n because P is invertible, right? P okay. belongs to G L N. Z. Ah, okay. This is the one point perhaps you did not understand. This once you understand know this, then there is no problem. You can remove this one then. So this is an arbitrary element. Okay. So okay, maybe one more step I'll write. Yes, sir. Now I understand. A prime. Okay, okay. A prime Y. Z n. Oh, yes, Z n. And therefore this is Q. Y prime and yes. Y prime. Okay, so again, let us see an example. So let us go back the same example. Uh, A equal to one, two, three, four, six, six. Uh, we got A prime equal to one, zero, 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 two, zero. Q prime was, so Q inverse was one zero four minus one. P is one minus two, three. Zero one minus three, zero zero one. Uh, A prime X prime is zero if and only if. Uh, from here, so I know that X one prime, X two prime, they should be zero and X three prime can be any integer right this time solving for a prime i know how a prime looks like then uh, ax equal to zero if and only if a prime p inverse x is equal to zero that is x equal to px inverse x prime which is p multiplied to zero zero x three prime that is, uh, you just multiply. What is this? X3 prime. 3 minus 3, 1. 3 minus 3, 1. The last column of P. The third column of P. Yes. 
Okay. Uh, then we want to know image under the image under a prime is what a a e one plus b uh, two p e e two right two. So the image under a is q times a to b right same thing i'm writing like this that is one zero four minus one to be multiplied to a to b and which is same thing as a four a minus two b or it is same thing as a one four b one minus two combination of the columns of q Okay, so observe that this one, one, four, two, four, two, six, and three, six, namely the columns of A uh, generate the image of A, right? It, it's, it's supposed to generate because A, we are writing AZ. So I get a linear combination of the columns. But it's not a basis. But it is not a basis. Whereas what we have got at the end, namely one four and one minus two, is a z basis. Okay. So here in the linear com linearly independent and anything in the image is a linear combination. So linear independence is failing in the first one in the with the columns of A. Am I right? Will you mm -hmm. verify that? that they are not linearly independent? You will be able to find some combination that you know, of course, but in these are coefficients are enough. Okay. <clears throat> Next, sub modules. Not, not much time is there, just I'll make a call statement and then stop maybe. Submodules of free modules. Of course, with over rings, commutative rings with unity, with over a commutative ring with unity. Okay. So, uh, this in this topic, uh, maybe a corollary I can quickly finish here. Corollary. Suppose phi from V to W is a homomorphism, homomorphism of free abelian group, groups. Then there exist basis of V and W. A basis means Z basis, okay? Z basis. Such that the matrix of phi is a diagonal matrix. So this is what we have practically got in terms of the language of homomorphism, right? Because given a homomorphism, I can choose basis and write down its matrix, Z matrix. And that matrix is now uh, by choosing suitable basis for the domain and co-domain space, and the new, uh, with respect to a new basis for the domain and co-domain uh, groups, abelian groups, the matrix is a diagonal matrix. So this is what we get in, as a result. Okay, okay so uh, here, what I want to talk about with submodules, which I'm going to do prove next time, but statement is very interesting. Just I'll make it so that you can uh, appreciate. Suppose W is a free abelian group of 
rank m that means it is a z module and rank is m and let u be a subgroup of w okay then u is a free abelian group and its rank is less than or equal to m okay so to this i think first exercise x comma y is a is a sub module of c x comma y am i right yes, yeah so and it is not really generated by two elements but if it is free according to this theorem it has to be generated by how many elements what is the rank of this one rank of a of r over r this one. is a one. one r is a r module of rank one right that you know and this is a sub module if it is free it has to have rank less than or equal to less than or equal to right right so it has to be one so but you have you know that this is not a free and another thing in algebra you know that it does not have a this ring this ideal is not a principal ideal okay that is again another state okay all right so here i am going to finish in a minute the state c u if w is free then its sub subgroup is free secondly if if i know the rank of w then i know what can be the what can be the you know maximum a bound there is a bound of the rank of u namely the rank of w okay so so uh, this requires two things that first you have to prove that u has finite rank if u is any subgroup of a free abelian group uh, of finite rank then every subgroup is finitely generated and in, it is in fact free and the number of generators is bounded by the rank of the group w okay so i'll finish here if you have a question you can ask okay so i'll close then